If you like this video, click like and subscribe. Guitar Collector Guy welcomes you to part two of the Red Stratocaster build out guitar assembly. So I had hurt my back, but I don't know about you all, but when I get all the parts in for a project, I'm excited and I still went out in the garage and put this thing together. So the first thing I did was decided to work on the body and I put beeswax on the trim claw screws and went ahead and installed the trim claw. I just set it at about half depth. Um, the reason that I installed the trim claw first is we're going to install the electronics in the guitar and one of the ground wires is actually soldered to the trim claw. I have this um, really, really long number two screwdriver that I've had for a long time that's great for doing things like installing the trim claw and stuff so you don't accidentally ding the finish of the body while you're turning. And you can put your fingers underneath it as you turn it and protect the body as you're um, tightening the screws. So I looked for the two ground wires on the preloaded pickguard that I had bought from Seymour Duncan. And the first one comes with a clip on it that you screw directly into the top of the body in the cavity, as you can see. After installing the first ground wire, I looked for the black and the white wire that I would feed through the body to the cavity where the uh, input jack is. The wiring um, insulation is already trimmed back, at least with this kit, and the wires are pre-tinned. And what I mean by that is someone has actually twisted the bare wire and actually then heated solder uh, over it. So then when you attach it to the back of the audio jack and go to solder, solder the um, solder will actually flow easier because they're pre-tinned. There's a small drilled hole that's inside of the control cavity that feeds up into sometimes it's a little bit well it feeds up into the um, input jack cavity and sometimes it's a little bit difficult to feed as you can see here i'm feeding one wire at a time pull the white wire through and then i'm going to go ahead and grab the black wire and pull it through as well In hindsight, I should have had something sitting on the body while I did the soldering because it's easy to drop solder onto the finish and really screw it up. But I, I didn't and I was careful. Um, so the white wire goes to the center lug and the black wire goes to the outer lug. And when you look at the input jack, you'll be able to see this pretty easy. So here I am, I'm heating up. I put a little bit of solder on the back of the um, outer lug and I'm soldering the white and the black wires on and it's a pretty simple process. Later on I'm going to go ahead and do a video on basic soldering skills for uh, guitars and I'm also actually going to build some wiring harnesses so you'll get an idea of how to um, solder uh, more effectively. Um, <clears throat> in this guitar uh, project, I kind of went simple for my first project on the channel. I went ahead and ordered basically four main components, which is the neck, a populated or loaded pickguard, um, and the body, and I would say the, um, the bridge tremolo.
After I tightened down the screws for the input jack into the body, I'm now gonna feed the last ground wire from the loaded pickguard um, through a hole uh, underneath the bridge pickup cavity. And it's gonna come out back into the rear tremolo cavity. And this is the wire that you actually then solder to the trim claw. Now, two things. One, the wire is also stripped and tinned. Um, but it was kind of dry, so I went ahead and put a little more solder on it because you really have to get a lot of heat on that trim claw to get it um, hot enough to have the solder flow. And so then I went ahead and laid the soldering iron on uh, the solder on the trim claw that was already there um, and then laid the wire in the hot solder and then pulled the soldering iron away and let it cool in place. The solder joint should be bright and shiny. So the next thing I did was I laid the loaded pickguard in place and I installed the 11 screws um, for this specific pickguard. Um, older um, Stratocasters came with eight um, screws. Um, more modern uh, pickguards have 11 screws. So when you're ordering a pickguard replacement for your Stratocaster, make sure that you're ordering the correct number of screw holes um, for your body type. Next in the project, I installed the tremolo bridge. This is a vintage six screw tremolo bridge as opposed to the two post tremolo bridge. Um, again, because this is the first time I'm putting screws into this body, I take the six screws and I'm putting beeswax or some kind of wax on them. I'm screwing them in. I'm not tightening them all the way down because I want to have a floating bridge. Um, what I do is I tighten them down and then I back them off. You want the two outer screws to be a little bit um, closer to the bridge than the four center. So what I do is I back off after I've screwed them all the way in the two outside, the six and the first screw. Um, I do basically about um, three quarters of a turn back. The four, I back off about a full turn out. So full 360 degrees around. So next, um, I install the three trim cloth springs or trim springs. And um, I am gonna have a floating bridge. So you can see the configuration of how I'm installing them. There's multiple ways to do this. This is the way that I prefer. Also, please ignore that I put the little board in there. Um, I was thinking ahead as to uh, adjusting the trim and really kind of served no purpose at this time. Um, what I did do though is I screwed in the trim claws to um, the length of what I normally um, would screw them in for having about an eighth clearance between the face of the um, uh, body and the bridge when you turn the guitar over. So the bridge is installed um, and basically the body is assembled. So the last thing for assembly that I'm gonna do now is I'm going to wax the four uh, neck screws or bolts and prep them for installation um, into the back of the um, uh, guitar. I'm gonna go ahead and then once I do this, take the neck and kind of rock it in from the front backwards into the um, uh, body to make sure that it fits properly and is snug. This one actually was a little bit loose, uh, but still had a good fit. Um, I grabbed then the, um, the neck plate, uh, put it on, and I hand um, started uh, the uh, four uh, neck bolts or screws. Um, once I get them hand started and they're actually engaging with the neck, then I'll take a screwdriver and almost kind of like how you do putting on uh, a tire on a car. Um, I kind of tighten the screws across from each other. Um, 
and I keep on doing this until they're hand tightened. It just has to be a snug tight. You don't want to over crank this. So then after the um, four bolts are tightened, I go ahead and turn over the guitar. And for all intents and purposes, the basic assembly of this new guitar is done. Um, if you, so the assembly is done. Stay tuned for part three, which is the setup of this new guitar. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. Guitar Collector Guy, thanks you very much for sharing this video and watching my video. Thank you.